you just see what's out there and then you see that it's all relatively the same and you know you can bring something fun and exciting and different that's going to yield long lasting results and you have to get a little bit creative about how you're going to get your products but then you're like you know what this is serious so you invest in your education you believe that you can and then you see the market and like you said you know what this is this is plausible right like and the thing is and what i want to share with our community is that this is the case in like pretty much anywhere it doesn't matter if you live in the states and there's a salon in every corner Hey there and welcome back. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Paola of paolaponsenails.com, your source for all things premium soft gels and entrepreneurship in the nail industry. If this sounds like a niche you'd like to continue growing in, then at the end of this video, do consider subscribing to this channel and our weekly newsletter. Let's begin. Are you feeling like the nail market is oversaturated or that perhaps you don't have it all put together yet to go and do your own thing in nails successfully? Or perhaps maybe you just simply lack the confidence for it all. Even in my very first year of doing nails, maybe even my second, if I admit, I can't even imagine being overbooked and being an in-demand nail tech. I was just glad if I got one more client and that their nails stayed on. We often think about being brave and just going for something. You know, the cliche, she believed she could, so she did. Well, my guest today, who is also one of my MGN grads, did indeed take a leap of faith to have the 100 deep list of returning clientele she has now as an independent. And she'll be sharing how by getting a little strategic and paying attention to what everyone else is doing, you can actually stand out by doing something different. Born in Mexico, raised in New York, Viviana moved back to Mexico just a few years ago to give her life a fresh start. Little did she know she'd also be bringing the Mexican resort city of Cabo San Lucas, its very first soft gel specialized nail studio. Today, Viviana will be sharing her tips on how to stand out as the go-to nail tech in your area, even when there's already one in every corner. I'm so excited for you to listen. Let's dive in. Vivi, welcome to the show. I am so happy you are here with us today. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm well. I've already introduced you, but remind us again where you are joining from, because it's very special. I'm joining from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And you do nails there full-time, professionally. Now, you were born in Mexico, but lived and was raised in New York, correct? Yes. Yeah, and while correct. you were in New York, did you have um, an interest in nails or was it just sporadic? It was because of being, you know, at home quarantine all this time that you decided to get into no. nails or did you have like a previous interest? I did have a previous interest. I guess before five years ago, I became a little too obsessed because then I started, I started noticing that on Instagram, you were getting a lot of nail mm-hmm. art, a lot of nails like more, more design. So I, that's when I started focusing more on getting my nails done. What brought you to Cabo to do gel nails and specifically soft gel nails? Well, I learned soft gel and how to apply soft gel in during quarantine. I had learned from gel back around five years ago and then quarantine, you know, everybody had time, everybody was at home. So that's when I decided doing more research in regards to the product. And that's when I found you, Paola, on YouTube. And then I follow your Instagram. And then I just happened to see you giving a course on Cocoas. After learning more about soft gel, especially with Cocoas, I decided to focus on a specific market, which was more young professionals, older women. So... I I have a friend that visited here, that lived here, so I visited, and this is the perfect market for that. So I decided to just, and and I still had to pick something that was not, well, I had to pick something unique, just because everybody here works with acrylic and gel, and that's it. So it was going to be a new product, uh, something completely different, 
And there are, this is a very tourist place. So definitely there are salons in every corner. So I had to really stand out completely Mm -hmm. as to something completely new, fresh and new. When I decided to move to Mexico, I had to basically find a business and I didn't want to work for anyone. Mm -hmm. And also I do know Spanish, but I do not know Spanish professionally to have you know a real steady job so it was still I was like I have to do something completely by myself and just start over and that's when I decided to focus on getting my license in regards to nails it it just had to be like I like doing this I could do this and you didn't start right away in a studio, right? Because this is important. I feel like a lot of uh, newbie nail techs, including my students, they kind of think maybe in their head that they have to, you know, kind of go all out or not do it at all. In fact, you kind of did by moving to a new country, but you still started small in your workplace, right? Like you didn't start in a studio. So tell us where you started. And- hey, before we continue, I'm hosting my most popular masterclass live this Tuesday. It's called the three big changes nail stylists need to make for monthly wearing gel nails and it's completely free. If you haven't yet watched this free training, join me. I'll be live teaching, answering questions, and also sharing all of the details of my program, Master Gel Nails. There is an attendee limit for this free training, so grab your seat right now or make sure to do so right after the video using the link below in the description. In the beginning, I started in a room in my, in my mother's house in Puebla. And then when I moved to Cabo, I did it in my apartment in the living room. And then after that, I rented a table in a hair salon. And then I was there for a year. And then after having 50 clients, I decided to open my own salon. 50 and then I w- clients within a year. <laughs> Those are return clientele. Exactly. And then after that, um, and I started following a lot of accounts. And that's when I started noticing there were a lot of private studios and a lot of manicures that just focus on hands and not necessarily work at a salon. Mm-hmm. So then I started doing more research on that. And that's when I decided to just to focus on it and go from there. A lot of them were asking me for pedicure service. And they were begging me. So, <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I was like, I need my own place. I've been here at the salon. I opened the salon in September, uh, October 5th of last year. We're and make you now. hired a pedicurist because like you said, it was not necessarily your thing. You didn't want to do it. Um, you know, you you, you never want to do anything you don't want to do in this industry because it is taxing. It is you putting yourself into every service, right? So you don't want to, you know, burden your energy with something that you, your heart's not in it. So that that was very wise of you. And that's not even something that I counsel you on. That's something that you were like, nope, I'm going to do it, you know, ha- hire this out so that someone else can do it for me. So that's lovely. Now you're in your studio, you're growing, and you have a return clientele list of about a hundred clients. A hundred clients. So this is amazing. And these clients mm-hmm. are diehards. They're like, Vivi, I don't want anybody else touching my nails, except you <laughs> kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So now you're kind of forced. <laughs> yes, you're, the pressure. <laughs> you're forced into the situation where you're like, you need to hire, but you need to do it slowly because your clients definitely still want to hold hands with you. So we were, we talked about this prior to getting on this call about the strategy that you have. And that's great. Again, you had options kind of, sort of, but you said, nope, soft gel only. And tell me what had you been noticing were like the reasons these clients were are diehards, you know, like they're not going anywhere else, basically, you know, how are your services different? Other than soft show, obviously. It's the the process of getting of prepping the nails. I guess mm-hmm. a lot of the clients here were a little they didn't like the fact that all other salons were hurting them. Um the prepping was really harsh. And they come in here, it's very I just, like you said once I on one of your course, when you're cleaning the cuticle area, just cut whatever is waving at you. Just don't cut more <laughs> yes, than that, okay. right? I always remember that. <laughs> I remember that. So, um, and also, um, 
I guess right now, a lot of my clients are looking more into quality than quantity. Obviously, my my prices are a little bit a bit more higher than everyone else. But is the the definition is completely uh, different than acrylic. I think a big thing here in Mexico is acrylic. So it's not too bulky. It's not too thick. Um, they like that the finish is very clean. It looks very natural. So this is what they like. And it lasts longer. Again, there's no chipping. The And honestly, I'm very, they know if they chip a nail or something like that, they know they could always come back and I, it has a guarantee, you know? You know, I'm more than happy to help if, if it was to happen. So they like that, that they could reach out to me. And again, I believe in the product and they like it. I guess that's sort of how I got started with gel nails and soft gel specifically also because it was everything that I ever wanted in for my nails, my natural nails embodied in one system, potted soft gel systems. And for me as a customer, literally like 10 years ago, I started getting into nails because I couldn't find anyone that did nails in like how I wanted to do nails. Like or one of them done. And one of the things was the prep. Um, I, again, I know that my colleagues are gentle with us, a sanding band what and whatnot and an e-file. And, but for me, like, I didn't want that for me. Like I didn't want that for my nails, you know? And I was like, can we just, you know, is there any way you can do a file instead of a sanding band? And the answer was always like, no, no, we can't do that. We, we only work with e-file. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know? And it wasn't until yeah. I came across potted soft gel systems that I was like, wait, not only are some for- formulas sanding free, meaning you don't have to prep the nail with a buffer, I mean, yeah, a buffer or a file or an, a sanding band, they can literally just go on your nails after you cleanse it with alcohol. Yes, the wear may be a little bit less, like maybe 14 days. And obviously the more you start etching the nail, whether it be with a buffer or a file, a hand file, then obviously you're going to increase the adhesion because now the product is holding on like this versus just right over the nail, right? So I think that when your clients see that and anybody's clients see that and see that change, they really do become lifers if they're encountering abuse of products. Once you compare both items, I think that's what happened to me because I did start with acrylic and just comparing um, the product. I feel also with gel is less um, I love the fact that I re- we don't have to file to shape it. And with acrylic, that was one of the problems. I feel like it was a lot of time consuming. Yes. And so, and I just couldn't, I couldn't file for the life of me. I just couldn't, it was really hard for me to kind of adapt with, yes. um, and the but filing the for me, it's like workout too. I didn't feel strong enough to file and then patient enough to file the nails. So those two things were against me. So again, that played into um, and soothed us when we learned potted soft gel. So that's great. And I want to talk about something that I remember you doing, maybe, I don't know if you recall, but I knew that you were going to start your business in uh, Mexico after taking, I don't know if it was the first or the second course with me, but you started asking or, or really creating a document, an informational document and, and specifying what pot of soft gel was, what Japanese show was, you know, and I remember you sent it over for review for me. You were like, Paula, do you mind looking through this? And am I doing it? Am I nailing it? Am I saying it right? We obviously don't want to say it more than it is. And also we don't want to like short sell it where it's like, you know, it really is for me amazing, you know? Um, yeah. So I remember you sent that over to me and I, I believe that that helped also educate your clientele and get clientele because if you're telling people what it is, how it works, its benefits, why they should at least try it and why you think they're going to love it, um but just become curious as to like okay but what's it and even when they come in and they see the potted gels the color they're like what is that and i was like it's the color they're like why is it so small and i was like everything expensive comes small right (laughs) (laughs) so they like that so it it just yeah it it did help a lot the the little bio and just explaining the product is again because i did come here and i i just knew like what two people here so I had to kind of start a conversation 
and you know and just people and people like that they're like you're not from here like no <laughs> and they're like tell me more about your product and I do get new clients even even today I do get new clients and they're like tell me more about it like I want to know everything how did because it doesn't matter where you are a newbie a newbie is a newbie right so you're yeah. starting with zero clients baby and we have students and up and coming students who are new in the world of nails. So what do you think led to you getting these clients? Was it that education? Was it that conversation? I just needed to really master this. I needed to kind of sell it because again, I'm here by myself and I had, and again, practice makes perfect. So it was a lot of homework. Are you going it, to restaurants at this point? Are you hanging out with meeting new people? Do you have your stuff online? And this is how people are finding you? Are you on Instagram? People were finding me from, I was paying ads on Instagram. Okay. I was paying ads on Instagram. So I, I decided to move to a, uh, the hair salon to rent a table because a lot of the women that were reaching out to me when I was in my apartment, we're a little skeptical when I said like, oh, we were like, where's your salon? I'm like, I'm not at a salon. I'm at a house right now in my apartment. And they're like, oh, okay. Like I'll message you later. So that was a big red flag. So after you can say after four months, I had to move to a salon. And then that's when I started paying, playing, uh, paying the promos. That's when I did the bio. That's when, you know, it was just a lot of, it got real for you because pay. now you had like an overhead that you had to control and keep a tab on. So I was making a lot of videos. I was posting a lot. I was posting a lot just to kind of educate, educating, go- educating. So mm-hmm. it's, it still is an education process because quite frankly, I think that soft show is exploding. And my mission, what I do with my work is to educate people on what the difference is and maintaining a baseline of what we know from gel, because there's a lot of words being thrown out, like builder, what's builder, what's a uh, builder in a bottle or BF, you know, or what's rubber base, you know? And I think people need to understand that it, it all is soft gel and it's flexible and you got to understand flexibilities from there. What do you think has been the hardest thing of this entire journey? And maybe you've already talked about it, but definitely bring it back up if you think that was it. I think I have two. I think are the clients with short nails, <laughs> but surprisingly, um, like yeah, right now the product I can't get the product here in Mexico. I have to get it from the U.S. But you know, I manage myself to get it on time. But right now, it's just I do get a lot of clients that have short nails, and it's been a struggle with me with them because they don't. Is the lifting? Is the for some reason, it's a, but I feel it's just like I tell them is the fact that you have short nails, that you get too comfortable and you're still grabbing things and you're using your hands as, as what do you call it? As, tools. yeah, as tools that use in your mind is, oh, I have short nails. It doesn't, it's not, it's fine. Like nothing's going to happen. No, it does. Like you're, you're lifting, you're fracturing, you're lifting your nails. So I think that has it still only comes been, back uh, to education like all right let's let's do this now um yeah and i know like for me like one of the tips that i use when it comes to short nails because they are kind of interesting like you think like you said there's not going to be issues and then there is and yes it can definitely be that your client thinks like well they're not long like i'm just opening up this you know so what else am i supposed to open it up with and it's like no it's still a nail you still can split it like so there's still damage the other thing um just a tip for anybody that's dealing with this short nails um and maybe they're lifting at the free edge you can seal the edge with just like rubbing the base show on the tip of the natural nail no i do that and i do, do that all right but it's, it's always them. like it's always is yeah it's them it's not me <laughs> it's like i am tried because, and true i am a proven success here. this is not it's always it's always the three nails, like the thumb, the point finger, and the middle finger. It's like it, and the and the pinky and the ring finger are always on perfect condition. So <laughs> it's not me, girl. <laughs> I'm just gonna take it back and just run everyone through what you went through. So you started 
basically just like we all do out of interest, right? And curiosity. And you have a friend that says she uses soft gel and you're going to the World Wide Web. What is soft gel? Then you have what you called earlier in our call, a midlife crisis kind of thing. And you're like, I <laughs> moved to Mexico just out of the blue, right? And yes. you just see what's out there. And then you see that it's all relatively the same. And, you know, you can bring something fun and exciting and different that's going to yield long lasting results. And you have to get a little bit creative about how you're going to get your products. But then you're like, you know what, this is serious. So you invest in your education, you believe that you can, and then you see the market. And like you said, you know what, this is, this is plausible, right? Like, and the thing is, and what I want to share with our community is that this is the case in like, pretty much anywhere. It doesn't matter if you live in the States and there's a salon in every corner because that was the case in your case, you know, in your scenario, like, yeah, you have to find, well, how am I going to find the advantage here? Right. And for you, it was like, well, no one's doing this. And I think it's amazing. And that's how I got into it myself. Personally speaking, like I was like, well, if I stop talking about this, well, I feel like it's, dead, you know, like it'll die off. Like no one cares enough or no one has experienced the difference or no one has believed that they can succeed with the system that no one is using. That's an advantage, not a disadvantage. So I just think that it's great that you did not let fear get in the way and you just went for it. And at the end of the day, you had nothing to lose other than some gel money, I guess, that you had invested, of course. <laughs> but, and, you know, it was like you were already making this big decision of like, I'm just going to go to Mexico and live there. And that's that, right? Before and the thing we- is that a lot of people had doubt. A lot of people had doubt about it because I did invest. I invested on your on the Cocoa's course and then I invested on your course that I did inv- individually. And then I invested on the colors. And I was like, I have a, gu- a good feeling about this. Like, I think it's going to work out. Like, I have a business plan. Like you have to think about it, right? Yes. So. And one thing that you had, and you just mentioned earlier, was also that you you envision your ideal client. It's going to be this working woman. Young professionals. It, it's more, you know, most, most of my clients are anyone from 23 and more. And I think this is very helpful for anyone listening. Is that you got to understand that your ideal client for this particular niche it's going to be very particular. Like for me, I found that my younger girls, like off of Instagram, they didn't bat an eyelash paying whatever amount, right? And then I also found more of an ideal clientele also in older women that were a little bit more established in life. Also, like they didn't mind booking a recurring appointment with me. So I started learning what my ideal client was and I started realizing that it was okay to get a lot of no's or to get a lot of like, you know, passive aggressive comments and whatnot and not get angry and anything like that. So I think that's also beautiful that you were able to envision your ideal client as soon as you got there. So frankly, I believe you were supposed to be a businesswoman because (laughs) you understood it from the beginning. Um, You understood, again, that you understood, um, you know, how you can stand apart, why there, why this would be viable in your area. And again, this is viable in anybody's area, because I guess everyone can ask themselves right now, um, how many people are offering soft show in my area? And out of those that aren't using soft Joe, how many of them are usually using premium product, like imported product that has, you know, now in order to be premium, it doesn't have to be imported, but we all know that when something's imported, you're like, well, that person importing their products believes in them so much that they're willing to, you know, go through the process of importing products so that we have access to their products. And I always, I never take that lightly. So when I understood that a lot of the brands that I was into were imported, like I definitely wanted to learn more about them and their why and and all that. And what I learned was that these people care about their manufacturing, that, you know, they go through stringent quality tests to get us their product. And I wanted to support that. And this is why to today I still do. And so I'm just glad that you were able to 
feel what I felt for soft gels for <laughs> all these years, you know, um, because I, you know, again, I felt like not a lot of people were talking about them. And I was like, am I just crazy? Like, am I just in a bubble here? At some stage in your career, had the opportunity to be distracted. And what I mean is that you were offered to work with a company and work with their products and soft gel also, but you didn't, right? And it's not because the product was bad. Any one of their products was bad, but this is really good because you kept focus. And I think that in our industry, there's so much shiny object syndrome, right? Like I want to do this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this. And and then Mm -hmm. we end up looking like everyone else, right? And not standing out in this sea of nail techs. Um, You're offered to work with another company and you're like, no, soft gel only. Why was that? Just because when I, when they offered me the product, I had already been in the business for eight months. So I had already written down the bio and introduced myself as someone that does only soft gel. So obviously I didn't want to confuse the clients and I did try the product and I was like, it's great, but um, literally my bio, my profile information specifically says soft gel. So I just didn't. And again, when I, again, it comes back to when I first started in the business, I was doing acrylic, I was doing zip powder, I was doing gel and I was just all over the place. So I was like, I had been there before. So I just decided to kind of focus yes. on one. <laughs> and, and like I said, it wasn't, I just didn't want to confuse my client oh, because I was okay. like, what's the difference between this and that? I was like, mm, well, you don't want to talk bad about one product and then good about another one, you know? And I want to master one thing before I go and add another product to my And that's the thing, you will have to train yourself to learn that. So then you're going to have to find education on that. And it's going to take a a couple of weeks, a couple of months. And then, you know, that attention can come off of what you're already doing. And it might start hindering that. So it's really, really important to stay focused um, at any level of your journey, especially in the beginning. But as you can see from Vivi and I, When we were offered those opportunities, like even later in our careers, um, even when I used to get like press packages, right? Like, hey, would you try this? I'd be like, oh, no, but okay, you know? And it just like, I sometimes I go back to my YouTube and I'm like, why did I say yes to that? Like, it's not me. It's like, (laughs) I don't know, you know? But yeah, so keeping that focus is going to just take you further, quick, quicker. And we can see that definitely in your business. Um, what would you like to tell someone just starting in nails in any part of the world, right? That is kind of intimidated about bringing in something different, right? Something that stands out. Well, I'll tell them that they have to do the research. They have to do, you know, I did start with acrylic dip gel. I mean, the dip powder, but at the end of the day, I did, I knew nothing about it. And when I started doing soft gel, I, I looked up videos. I, I was doing a lot of research and kind of, and this is how I d- decided to believe in the, well, this is how I believe in the product. It's just, I did my homework. I, I did the research and asked to why this is a good product. And I just decided to go with it. I believed in the product. If you believe in the product, if you did your research and you're taking the courses, you're gonna, it's gonna work out practice makes perfect so even in the beginning if you feel like it's not coming around like it's not coming the way i see it on videos like practice makes perfect yes you know take your time to kind of learn and practice and you know that brings up something for me a lot of people nail techs whether they're newbie or intermediate they like to compare themselves especially like on social media right and like I've heard this from some of my students. It's like my, one of my problems is that I compare myself so much and my work just doesn't look like theirs, right? Whoever theirs is. And here's a word of advice and comfort, really. Like Vivi just said, take it step by step. Practice will make perfect. And it doesn't make it perfect immediately. Perfect makes better initially and then eventually perfect, right? And I can tell you that when if I compare my work and we could even do this with Bibi's work. If we compare Bibi's work, my work, it's not going to look like that beautiful work that's like circulating Instagram and that everyone's like double tapping on, but we were still booked. 
Like I was still booked. People still wanted me to do their nails. The same with Vivi. She's got a hundred clients, return clientele, you know? So stop the comparing between nail tech and nail tech. Keep working on it. You're going to see that you're doing right and you're nailing it when your nails are lasting long and when uh, your clientele is returning. That is a sign that you are doing it, that things are happening for you. Not the fact that your pictures still don't look like your, you know, idols on Instagram, which I'm sure they're amazing. I see them all the time. I have student work that looks way better than mine sometimes. And that's <laughs> fine. You know, it's like, I still know that I have something that I can help students with. Don't think that there's not something there for you. Like make those nails last, have those clients return. And in the same time, at the same time, get better. And you will, because if it's in you, if you want to get better, you will get better, right? It's not like you're gonna be like, well, I quit. I'm not, but I'm still going to do nails. No, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you are going to get better if you continue to do nails. So eventually, yeah, eventually you will get better. You, the time, even a service, a time will change completely. You're going to go from two hours to less than that. So it's all time makes perfect, you know? Vivi, um, where can my audience learn more about your journey and follow your journey? Well, they can check out my Instagram, Nels Alavid. Yeah, so if you happen to be in Cabo and you hear about Vivi or you're planning a trip to Cabo, then make sure to try to get in with Vivi. <laughs> um, so her Instagram is Nails a la Vive. Uh, for those of you who speak Spanish, you guys get the flow of that. Otherwise, if you don't speak Spanish, don't worry. We're going to link that in the description box below for you to go ahead and follow Viviana's story. Viviana, thank you so much for hanging out with us today, doing this interview with us and really letting our community know like not to be afraid to try something new, especially when it sounds as scary as like potted soft gel systems. No, thank you so much for having me. And honestly, thank you. I feel like you were holding my hand throughout this whole oh, like, that's beautiful. process. Thank you, Vivi. So thank you. How brave and spectacular is Vivi's story. I hope you enjoy our sit down and don't forget to grab your free spot to our live training this Tuesday using the link below in the description. If you do happen to watch this video after Tuesday, we hope to have a replay for you and that will also be found down below. Thanks for watching and you have a good week. Bye for now.